Story continued from Ruichi Raptor episode. Down by a river in the woodlands of Argentina, one of the largest predators the world has ever known is busy getting a clean from creatures a fraction of his size. Laying completely still is the massive male Giganotosaurus. And eagerly scurrying around him are the Pacobuichi Raptor, eagerly and carefully cleaning their much larger host, hoping that the giant doesn't make a small movement and accidentally crush them. The Giganotosaurus is being a good host, however, barely making any movement at all, even as some of the small carnivores bite a little bit too deep. He ignores the slight irritation and keeps scanning the area around himself. He is the top predator on the continent, and even the large sauropods wouldn't come close to him. However, there is one threat to him, and that is another Giganotosaurus. The huge carnivore noticed that all but one of the Buichi Raptor have finished cleaning his head. A good thing too, his jaws were getting tired of being held open for all that time. The last member of the pack was doing some finishing touches. He seemed to be younger, as his toothpicking skills weren't very professional. The Giga soon notices the Boichi Raptor has stopped picking at his teeth, and is about to close his jaws when something unexpected happens. The small feathered dinosaur not only sticks his head back in the Giganotosaurus's mouth, he puts his entire body in, with only his tail exposed through the sharp teeth. This has never happened before. The Boichi Raptor have only ever stuck their heads and forearms into his mouth before. And yet this one was either brave or stupid enough to throw himself right into his mouth. And now with two thin legs on his tongue and feathers bristling against the inside of his mouth, the Giganotosaurus had no idea how to react. He had to fight the urge not to immediately swallow, as that was the usual response to having anything between his teeth. He resisted, not wanting to devour one of his cleaning crew, as that would mean none of them would ever trust him ever again. Inside the Giga's mouth, the Buichi Raptor had no idea about the danger he was in. He just wanted to make sure that every part of the mouth had been clean, and for no particular reason, jumped right in. The Giganotosaurus, however, couldn't keep his mouth open, and was beginning to breathe more heavily and shuffle on the ground, sending the birds on his back flying away, and alarming the Buichi Raptor pack. The Giga lightly swung his head to the side in an attempt to throw the young Buichi Raptor out, but the small dinosaur froze and clung to the Giga's teeth around him. In the end, it was too much for the Giganotosaurus. He took one deep breath, and with a loud bang-like noise, sneezed, sending the Boichi Raptor flying out of his mouth till he landed and rolled in the sand covered in saliva. The rest of the pack bolted away in fright, fearing they may have done something to upset and anger their giant host. The Giga coughed a few times, and shook his head before rising up to his feet, and letting out a dissatisfied groan. He wasn't mad at the smaller dinosaurs, but unfortunately as he watched the drool-covered individual run in terror to join his pack, it was obvious that fixing the relationship between the two species would be difficult. The large male watched the group gather inside a fallen tree trunk, and reluctantly went on his way. Hopefully, his cleaning crew would forget about this incident by the time he returned. Hello everyone, and welcome back. Today we will be breaking down a predatory dinosaur even larger than the mighty T-Rex, Giganotosaurus. Giganotosaurus was a massive theropod dinosaur that lived 98 million years ago in Patagonia. The first skeleton was found in 1993 by an amateur fossil hunter, and was 70% complete. Since then, only trace amounts of fossils have been discovered. A lot of debate and research has gone into Giganotosaurus' size, with estimates varying from 4 to 13 tons and 12 to 15 meters long. The most up-to-date measurements, however, put the animal at a length of 13.2 meters, a height of 4 meters, and a weight of 8.2 tons. With these estimates, that would mean the only terrestrial predator larger than Giganotosaurus would be Spinosaurus, which got up to 15 meters. Unless, of course, you classify Spinosaurus as an aquatic predator, in which case you would make the claim that Giganotosaurus was in fact the largest land carnivore of all time, like what Jurassic World Dominion did. 
The skull was very large and had many flat serrated teeth built for cutting and slicing as opposed to crushing. Its brain, however, was quite small, with most of it dedicated to smell, so it wasn't the brightest of dinosaurs. To support its large head, its neck was large and robust to deal with the pressures of fighting strong prey. Despite its size, Giganotosaurus may have been quite fast, reaching speeds of up to 50 kilometers per hour over short distances, making it that much more dangerous. So what did it hunt, and how? It is believed that Giganotosaurus would have targeted young sauropods. I remember as a kid when this picture was really making the rounds. But for different prey, it would have used different tactics. For prey smaller than itself, it could easily overpower them with its immense size. If it hunted in packs, they may have gone for full-grown sauropods as well, using their sharp cutting teeth to inflict deep wounds, slowly wearing the target down until blood loss and shock took over. There is even the theory that Giganotosaurus would run up to a sauropod and then bite off a chunk of flesh and retreat to effectively snack off the giant herbivores and subsequently leaving them alive, but covered in scars. Since sauropods seemed to be quite common during the time Giganotosaurus was alive, it's possible it evolved alongside them in order to predate them, and that is the reason it got so large. Unfortunately, we don't know a whole lot about Giganotosaurus, and most of it is speculation or heavily scrutinized. Either way, it is obviously an extremely large, fast, and powerful apex predator, that pushes the limits of how large theropod dinosaurs could get, and shot to fame quickly after its discovery in the 90s, even if today it is a little less known. On a final note, I do think that in terms of artwork, Giganotosaurus had a bit of a hard time looking unique, and that a lot of artists made it look like a large Allosaurus with back spines, which is why my favorite version of Giganotosaurus has to be the Dominion version. Sure, it's a bit over the top, but they really gave it its own identity, as well as a great roar. But what do you think of Giganotosaurus? Should it get more attention from the general public? And are you sick of it only being brought up in can it beat a T-Rex arguments? Let me know what lesser-known dinosaur you'd like me to cover in a future episode. And until then, thank you for watching.